Okay, I'm going to do Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 this evening. And this lesson may become stale to some of you, dealing with this circumcision here. But to a few of you, it won't. And I could speak for hours, three, four, five, half a dozen hours on the different contexts of circumcision in the Old and New Testament. So I've narrowed it down to stay in the territory of Galatians here and what Paul's point is to these folks. I narrowed it down to just about 15 minutes for this. But in the future, I do plan to do a great deal on the circumcision of the flesh and the circumcision of the heart. So let's begin this fifth chapter of Galatians here, moving right along, verses 1 and 2. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of the bondage. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What yoke is Paul referring to? Referring again and again to the Galatian church in this letter. We've talked about it for the past half a dozen or so lessons. You know, you know what a yoke is? It's a wooden implement that went around, that went around oxen or mules necks in order to pull a cart with a load, basically. And the yoke was U-shaped. It was a curved piece of wood. And that yoke rubbed the necks of those oxen or livestock. It rub them raw. If they were overworked, that wooden piece would just rub, rub, rub that hide right off of them. And the leather straps were attached to this yoke to a plow or a cart. And that animal was in bondage to that yoke until that old yoke was removed at day's end. And the yoke is symbolic in many biblical passages. And these or several contexts it's used. And in this context, Paul's using it as trying to receive salvation from God by, by trying to keep the laws and ceremonies and obedience to them as an old wooden yoke around the neck in constant bondage. And that Repenting of sin to the grace of Jesus through faith in his finished work allows the bondage of the yoke, the laws, to come off, to be free from laws that just cannot save. Now, keeping God's laws is not bondage. No, sir. We are to thirst and strive to keep them. But Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is liberty, and the believer in him are under no legal system. Actually, the Christian is called to a much higher level to live by. We are to reflect the life Christ led. We fall short, and that's no excuse. But we are to do our earnest to live in a way that pleases him. It's a way of life from sunup to sundown. And love our fellow man. And be a character representative for Jesus. Let's read Galatians 5 1 again. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And Paul is clear. Stand fast. Unmoving. In the liberty, the freedom inherited from Jesus' substitutionary crucifixion and to not be entangled, burdened again and again, going back to the yoke of bondage, the laws, and his disciplines, 
its punishments, the law's penalties. And through the seed of Abraham, the seed was Christ. And a promise covenantally was made to Abraham by faith. All who believe on Christ are justified by faith. And the people, the Galatians in Paul's case, have a desire to go backwards for some reason. It's the Judaizers. Just as the movements today, it's all over YouTube, they're going backwards. You got white Israelites, you got black Israelites, you got yellow Israelites, you got light-skinned, dark-skinned Israelites. Everybody's an Israelite. The laws were given to the authentic, genuine Israelites. Not to justify them, but to restrain them from the lawlessness and to make them familiar with immorality and sin and the consequences of it. To lead them to Christ. Now Judaism then, as today as well, still seeks salvation through laws. And the laws having more to do with their souls than Jesus. And today as we sit here, they're adding more to captivity and bondage. Adding rabbi-inspired Noahide laws where the modern day Sanhedrin will validate the consequence of the severity they seem fit. That's a lesson for another day. The Noahide laws. They're the same oral laws Christ criticized are in the Noahide laws. Let's read verse 1 one more time into verse 2. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now circumcision was the mark of a Jew. Okay? To be circumcised was absolutely essential for obedience to the law and for salvation. Circumcision today is common sense to practice. It's proper hygiene. Now, every single person that has walked the earth, the round earth, worshipped something throughout their life. Muhammad, Buddha, the horoscope, yoga, a popular musician or athlete. Some people care for their car in a more loving manner than their children and spouse. But when it comes between Christianity and Judaism, there can be no compromise. You either commit to traditions and rituals, observances and laws, or the Savior of mankind. Period. The Messiah Jesus. There cannot be a compromise between Christianity and Judaism or Catholicism in the matter of physical outward all those rites and acts and rituals and observances. You can put Catholicism in that same category. But Paul is specifically dealing with circumcision here in that the outward, visible, physical observance and procedure of circumcision is of no, it's of not of any significance. Not of any significance whatsoever for salvation. Uh, let's read 1 Corinthians 7.19. This is Paul here. 1 Corinthians 7.19. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God. So what the Apostle Paul is preaching in this verse and Galatians 5 too, is that the outward conventional covenantal circumcision was to mark the Abrahamic covenant and the Old Testament people in that covenantal period. It was a physical reminder that they were to be a separated people set apart to serve the true Lord. Now basically they were 
They were branded. They were trademarked as the people of God. And this is a fact. That was shown outward. As outward as the act of circumcision was the behavior and character lacking of such a people that represented the creator of existence. It was an old covenant mark, which I tell you, the Bible tells you, was never a means by which the people in representation of God were to earn righteousness in the eyes of God. Certainly not salvation. Now Jeremiah the prophet pleaded, he pleaded with his people to repent that repentance was paramount in earning God's favor. And in righteousness in his eyes was through repentance. And that the judgment was coming. Judgment was coming and nothing could avert that judgment. No other way, no other act could avert the coming judgment. That judgment was a coven. Not, it was coming. And not one observance, not one ritual, not one ceremony could reverse it. And circumcision was another. Nothing but repentance. They had heart disease, an epidemic of uh, heart problems, just like here in America, and righteous living. Righteous thought and righteous character and a renewed heart, abundant in repentance, was needed. Let's read Jeremiah 4, 1 through 4 here, just to get the gist of what I said there. If you will turn, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. And you shall swear the Lord lives in truth in judgment and in righteousness. The nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him they shall glory. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and do not sow among the thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your hearts, you men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like a fire, and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings. So you see, now this applies to authentic Israelites and Jews and believing servants for Jesus today. Though some may not put forth the effort as a way of life as others, but those who genuinely believe the Lord Make conscience compliance to keep the commandments. Repenting vigorously when falling short are called blameless and upright in Scripture. Now having zero faith and the lack of repentance and betting on salvation, on circumcision, rituals, observances, and festivals, exclusively only outward acts of your own two hands, making your own way, well... It'll make for a dark final breath of life, I tell you. So back to uh, the verse, back to verse 2 here in Galatians. Read it once more. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that, he, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. So, long story short, I'll allow Paul to wrap up his interpretation of Galatians 5.2 with chapter 2, verses 28 through 29 in his letter to the Romans. For no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly, nor is circumcision outward and physical. But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. Till next time.